to tonight's episode of the Group Therapy Podcast. Tonight we have Tanya Atomic, filmmaker, musician, writer, uh, acrobat. I don't. You, you've doing a ton of stuff. It looks like. Um, please tell us a little bit about yourself. Oh, I'm Tanya Atomic. <clears throat> I am a filmmaker. Um, I direct, write, produce, edit, act. Um, when you kind of make your own films in a no budget, low budget atmosphere, you do, I tend to wear a lot of hats. Um, so yeah, I do all that, but I'm also, you know, a musician. Um, I also am an antique stealer and as well as, you know, I do other kind of crafty, handy kind of things. Cool. Um, I found you because... I, I know this is gonna be bad. I found you through Facebook on uh, people you may know, um, and come to find out, we have a lot of people that we know together. Um, you've worked with uh, uh, an acquaintance of mine, Henrik. Um, I've worked with him actually on two movies, and you've worked with him. Yes. Yeah. Um, nice. Yeah, um, I, he was a cameraman for one movie, and then I was an uh, extra in uh, another movie. He was directing Bulldog for Christmas. So, um, oh yeah, I've seen Bulldog for Christmas. Yeah, I am. I'm office party goer. Okay, <laughs> a long time ago, um, and I have to say that this I got to get into this right away. Um, you directed the sequel to Manos: Hands of Fate. Yes, and, I did. Monos Returns is uh, the sequel to Monos Hands of Fate. And, the, and I directed that. Very, yeah, very proud of that. That is amazing to me. Uh, that is a, Manos is me and my, my two boys. That is a movie that we all kind of just bonded over for, because of Mystery Science Theater <laughs> and all that stuff. Um, and then one day I'm sitting there because I found you and then you're, it was like, you directed Manos Returns. And I'm like, oh, okay. And I looked it up. I'm like, oh, wow, that's got some of the original cast back. I think that's amazing. And and reading, I mean, okay, I, I read it on Wikipedia on how this came to be. Uh, is the Wikipedia entry correct um, that the uh, the girl who played Debbie got it and and kickstarted it and got everything going? And then was that correct? cool um oh totally yeah um so jackie Naaman jones one of my good friends um we became good friends working on the film we met first through a mutual friend and she started telling me about the project and i kind of was like hey consider me because i've done this stuff and showed her my work and that's how i got involved and there are all these strange kismet moments in creating this film like come to find out that Jackie is also friends with my old coworker who I knew for several years who I worked on projects with <clears throat> and I actually got to show her one of I got to show Jackie one of my projects that I did with Rachel Jackson who I'm talking about and Jackie and her were already friends they already knew each other and um I got to show her a project that I did with Rachel um as as one of my like like, this is my reel. Take a look at my stuff. And um, she also was already working with Joe Sherlock, who was our other producer and director of photography. He was already um, working together with her, and, he, and she had already picked him as director of photography. He was also a friend of mine that I worked with several times. So it was really interesting. So, so Jackie, who I had just met at the time, who was the little girl in Manos, the Hands of Fate, ended up being friends with two of my friends and was working with them already and and then I got to come on and you know essentially work with people I knew already and um we kickstarted we did a kickstarter um and we appealed to fans of the original we appealed to people who had helped kickstart the restoration of the original and friends and family and the larger Mr. Science Theater world and all that and we're able to to make enough to make the film that we did. So um, that is how it came about. Jackie wrote a book 
called Growing Up with Manos the Hands of Fate. And um, she had been researching for her book and had met several of the people involved in the original movie or re-met some of them and met some of them for the first time, like the, um, some of the musicians, singers, um, some of the other people that she hadn't really met. And then she got to reconnect with um, Diane Adelson, Diane Marie from the original one as well and so that uh those connections were essential to bringing about the film as well yeah and it's funny because because uh i've kind of like looked into the history of the rid manos that you know like the only two people that got paid were the dogs and the little girl because she got a bike and the dogs got a bag of dog food uh <laughs> and it, it's just some because i know like a year before for you there somebody else made a manos sequel but yours is official and you know with the, the cat with some of the original cast and um you know it, it's i just find it amazing that 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 something that obscure that had to become you know a cult classic way way late and you were able to bring it to to fill you know for fruition with this new version of it and well, not version of it, the new sequel. Um, I, I gotta just say congratulations on that. That's amazing to me. And that, you know, thank you. The fact that you have the original master, <laughs> that's just <laughs> great. <laughs> um now when you know, with going through all that stuff, did you, you know, have any issues with anything? Did you did you have, you know, uh, running any problems or anything making it or was it you know just one of the ones that well, you said it was kismet did, did that just kind of all fall into place kind of all throughout the you're always going to have problems when you do low budget no budget yeah. style i mean ours is ours is i think it's no officially no budget because it was so the budget was so small um it was under thirty thousand dollars um and there's always going to be issues because you don't have the money to make it comfortable in some ways. Um, you know, there's four producers, me, Rachel, Joe, and Jackie, and we all had to wear several hats um, and take on many roles, not just producing, not just directing, that kind of thing. Um, and, you know, it was it was hard. It was a lot of hard work. We were putting in a lot of long days. Um, we had some you know, close call moments where it was like, okay, we all have to scramble and make sure we get all the footage, you know, like on set, we all have to scramble and make sure we get all the footage we need with this one actor, you know, this certain day or the next day, because we didn't, because there was a location issue or whatever, and we have to do it all here, and we have to keep working until the, duh, because um, that person was leaving in the morning, that kind of thing, and so we had a lot of moments like that where it was like, okay, we have to get this thing because we're doing this and, and this is happening and there's logistics issues and we're losing this person here or this person's going to come in someone has to pick them up and all, the, all of that stuff. And um, yeah, I think the number one um, issue that we had was with sound, was with audio. Um, we had, uh, we did have those logistic issues, like I said, but luckily we all were flexible and we were all like this big moving unit so that we were able to get things done. But what we couldn't control was the, the audio for the external shots. Um, we had one day where there were swallows chirping. I mean, they were super cute. There were these baby swallows in a nest at the location at exterior of the lodge. And, um, you know, they were chirping and chirping. And then we had also some exterior shots where people in town knew we were filming. <laughs> small town not very populated but people would come drive by and then they would circle it back again because they wanted to see what we were doing <laughs> and so we would get that audio of the, of the traffic coming through and and we had you know there's only so much we could do we had somebody standing at the end of the road not letting people through and yet we could still hear you know down the lane um so we had that issue and then the birds and then you know a few few other automobile type things and then all of a sudden 
we think we got it and then turkey vultures start going <laughs> and they start squabbling or fighting i don't know what they're doing but they are loud oh yes uh, have you ever heard turkey yep. vultures <laughs> but um so yeah so the audio issues we couldn't control and we often had to stand there for extreme lengths of time until we could get the right atmosphere for the audio but you know we still soldiered through and 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 you know we did it cool you, you could have done what they did with the original just no sound do it 30 seconds in a time and <laughs> <dump> it in <laughs> later <laughs> uh. <laughs> you know that was a conversation we were like we had decided at the beginning um that we wanted to do we wanted to make it as technically well as possible with the money we had and the talent that we had and try to do like a proper technically well movie and not fall into that trap where we're making mistakes on purpose but we do do a lot of nods to the original um with driving scenes and that kind of thing but we try to do it in the way where it's makes sense in the film and it's done technically well so we were balancing a lot of things and i think for the most part i think we succeeded yeah well you know it's funny because you're talking about the driving scenes and stuff like that i was like your movie is re relatively short but if you'd put the driving scene from the beginning of manos you your your movie would only been like five minutes long because it's like a 70 minute movie <laughs> 70 minute driving scene at the beginning of manos um, <laughs> uh, but no it's like I said, I, 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 I'm super happy that you guys have put this together. It, it's, it's fun. Um, yeah, like I said, I, I'm like looking at, of all things, I go, I go on your IMDB and stuff like that. And, you know, your work with people that I know, like I said, you, you worked with Henrik. Um, and then you've gone on to do things. You've done things five and six. And... I was an actress in, in a few of the things. Yeah. Sequels, yes. That's a... Now, now, which do you prefer? Do you prefer to be an actress or do you prefer directing? Do you prefer writing? Or do you just, like, have fun and wing it, go through all of it? Just, just have at it. It's really different. Um, you know, what, when I have an idea of, a, of something I want to do and I write it all out, if I have a very specific vision of it I do want to direct it and a lot of times I want to act in it too it's just because I have something really specific but there's times where I write something that I would love to see someone else do something with it um sometimes I like directing something I haven't written just as a change um it's a different it just as a different experience um there's times I you know for the past couple years I've had um couple projects that are on hold um just because we can't get travel we can travel and get people together mm -hmm. so i've enjoyed just acting because it's um a lot simpler and it's a lot easier for me to deal with in this climate really um so uh, joe sherlock is the one he's done the things sequels and um that was you know just a lot simpler for me to um just be an, an, an actor in that case and I've liked that during, you know, during now. I, I do want to start, you know, I'm hoping things get better in the world. And I'm wanting to start, um, you know, getting back into my projects, hopefully soon. Um, that's where my heart is. But I also, I love, I love just acting as well. And I haven't had a chance to do that as much until maybe the last couple of years. Okay. Um like I said, you, you, you're doing everything on these movies. You're producing, you're directing, your music, everything that you work on. Now, did you become, you know, director, writer out of necessity or were you just kind of like, okay, I'm acting, you know, or, or directing a movie, but I need a part, I'll just fill that part. Or had, did you, or I need music because I'm going to make music or did it all just be individual things that all kind of came together under one umbrella that is you? Well sometimes it's been out of necessity um be just because i i do the low budget stuff yeah. um i'm super independent and that's what ends up happening i'm not independently wealthy or anything so it ends that's how it ends up but um yeah sometimes it's out of necessity i mean often i have been 
thrown into um, roles that I didn't even plan to do because someone wouldn't show up kind of thing. So that's definitely happened. Um, but there, there are times, well, the things that I do, they have um, just grown naturally out of my own interest because I do have an interest in acting and I am a musician and I was doing music since I was like four. Um, so I was playing instruments and singing and stuff since I was really little. That's That's been um at my foundation before I ever got into filmmaking so there's that um but I don't know I mean there's times that I take on roles like editing or I take on roles like doing the props or whatever where I am doing it out of necessity but uh everything that I have done I guess what I'm trying to say is everything that I have done I do have a genuine interest in as well okay yeah, it's it's funny. Um, I know a lot of independent filmmakers around here, and uh, I've gotten phone calls, you know, and they're like, "Hey, you want to be in a movie?" I'm like, "Okay." And they're like, "Can you can you show up on like Saturday afternoon?" Uh, okay. And because it's all last minute, it's it's come in. I luckily I never had any lines in any movie I've ever been in because I don't think I could remember any of them anyways. Um, <laughs> it's not a Star Wars quote or a or a lyric out of a song. I couldn't remember it to save my life. <laughs> um, now you said you started out in music. Um, and that's your that's your 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 first thing. You said you were four. Um, what, what do you do? You, just you know singing you know musical instrument uh or just encompass you to like do multiple instruments or anything like that uh well I come from a, a musical family uh, my parents both sang in church choir um my parents both kind of dabbled in instruments but neither of them really played um, but when I was real little, and I would listen to the radio like, constantly, I asked for my own radio in my room, and I had this little plastic clock radio that was, like, from the 60s, and I would play it all the time, and um, my sister was taking piano lessons when she, she's older than me, um, so she was taking piano lessons, like, in her teen years, preteen years, and I really wanted to play, I really wanted to start learning, and the teacher said I was too young, and and it's kind of strange because I never really pressed for things. I just kind of like went with the flow a lot. But this I really pushed for. And I started taking piano lessons when I was four. Very simple piano lessons. And I and I took lessons for many years. And um, and I, I enjoy playing piano. I always liked it. Um, but I always had a problem. My same problem was I, I never like played the same thing with both hands <laughs> I would I would be a little off time with one hand mm -hmm. and I just always was like that and um it wasn't until I was uh, I was a teenager myself when I started I started playing guitar then I started taking guitar lessons and that is like you know one hand does one thing and the other hand does something else and that I took to more naturally and um, I, th I feel like that's my instrument. So I feel like guitar is my instrument, even though I can play keyboard piano to a certain extent. Um, it's, I'm not a virtuoso. You know, I have that issue where I, my hands are doing two, two different times. <laughs> so it's not quite right. I have to really think when I play. And I feel like that, you know, takes away from like the sort of flow muscle memory yeah. kind of thing. And so that, that is a problem when I play piano because I am like concentrating <laughs> and um but with guitar it's different so I really think that is my instrument and I and I sing as well I've been doing that for I was in several bands um I I did a lot of music like on my own before I went to uh film and video school which I did um in my 20s and after that I was in several bands and um then I decided I just really wanted to get back into filmmaking when you know when it was easier when digital was more accessible people making videos on their phones and things like that and it was just a lot easier to get projects made mm -hmm. uh, and then I was like you know this this is something I care about so I'm going to get into that again 
Now, were you ever one of the kids that, that had to get the camcorder out, make movies when you were younger and, and, or did you just, that came later or you just have fun? You know, when you got, well, I, I, I did a little bit of that with a friend. Um, I didn't have access to a, a camcorder because we just didn't have one um, growing up. I did have access. My dad was a photographer and um, I did dabble a little bit in photography. Um, Mm -hmm. but what I did do is I kind of dabbled in editing. Like I'd hook up the two VCRs and I would like make my own little edits of things. Yeah. And I would do that with tape players too. I'd hook up cassette players and I would make my own like remixes (laughs) of music. So I did both of those things when I was younger. Yeah. Yeah. Um, now with all the movies you've done, like I said, you've, you've done quite a few and you relatively started in, at least acting wise, at least it goes back here. Is it only back to like 2009? Uh, did you do anything before that? Did you do any independence or I know you do, all you do is independent stuff, but, um, was there anything that, that, you know, isn't listed on here or anything that you're, you know, I guess anything, any, any lost stuff that doesn't appear on you know um 2010 is when I I I said I made that decision to really jump back in Mm -hmm. get back into it and get serious and you know if if not get a professional job in a way if not that at least be making my own stuff that I'm putting out in my own way Mm -hmm. and um 2010 was when I made that decision so um 2009 is probably right. Um, I did do a student film um, in when I was in college. That was, I think, 2000. Um, but I did, I mean, I, I did do a student film in college and I had um, support as in I got to use the studio and I got to use the studio lights. Um, mm-hmm. But I did, they did allow us to go outside of the school and, you know, kind of write our own thing um cast our own thing outside of the school even hire people that weren't students and I I actually did win a grant for part of the budget and that was I think 2000 so that was my very first kind of foray it was cool it was 16 millimeter film and um that was my first foray like really kind of being more serious about it and doing like the hard hard work of a big production um it's a short film it's based on a Grimm's fairy tale it's called clever elsa and that is available online oh cool now you know that's about here um what what's the what's your favorite thing to work on is it you know because i you even did an animated one in here right you did uh where'd it go here so, I yeah. I did a voice. I do voice work too. Okay. So I voiced uh, stop motion animation um, for for another for Jim Smith. Yeah. Now, what's your what's your favorite thing to do? I mean, do you go? Is it directing? Is like your passion, or do you just just everything? You know, you just today it's filmmaking. You know, directing tomorrow. I might. You know, I really want to do acting, and then you know the week later you're like no I'm, I'm really into music this week or do you just have like one and then everything else is kind of like tiered down from that um if if I had to pick my my favorite thing really is music um but I find myself more active lately in filmmaking there's something um it's harder I mean <laughs> filmmaking is harder and demands more attention so I do put a lot of energy into that you know I can like sing a song in the shower but if I'm going to do any kind of video anything even if it's a small thing it's going to take a lot more effort so um that's where a lot of my effort goes um but yeah I don't know I mean I guess I do kind of waver back and forth mostly you know music is my first love and then I don't know. I think directing, acting, and writing is all kind of, you know, there and the same. And then, and then editing, I do enjoy, but it's not 
you know, this, it's not my love, like writing and directing and acting, but I do enjoy editing as well and producing. Okay. What genre of music do you like? I like all kinds of music. I, I basically, if something hits me a certain way, then I like it. Like I listen to anything from, you know, like old classical music, folk music. I listen to, you know, 50s and 60s pop music. Um, I listen to, you know, like 80s metal. I listen to, um, you know, like Korean pop. I listen to just all kinds of things. Um, it just depends if I like the songs or if I like the artist. I tend to follow artists more than genres. Me, I have an issue. I, I, I'm <laughs> an old school metalhead from way, way back. Um, but as I get older, I mean, I've also liked other stuff. And, and it's funny you talk about Korean pop music. That stuff is just so damn catchy. It's, <laughs> it's hard not to like. I'm sitting there because that stupid, uh, was it like uh, Samsung commercial, whatever, with uh, um, um, Butter that comes on. I'm like, I had to look that song up and listen to it. I'm like, man, that's just, that song is just got a hook and catchy. I should not be that, that, that. I want to listen to it again. So you like, <laughs> there, there, there's music that, that is your, is your, uh, um, what do we call it? Your guilty pleasure that you go to and like, man, I shouldn't like this, but I really, really like that. That's wrong. <laughs> um, hmm. I mean, I will defend a lot of my, my music. I will defend a lot of my music. Like, like I love Neil Diamond and I'm unapologetic about that. Um, that. I, you know, I have a lot of, I like, I mean, I, I do like Barry Manilow and I feel like some of his stuff's a little, but you know, I, I still, I still really like him and I think he's a talented guy and I'll stand behind that. Um, my guiltiest pleasure about music, I mean, I would say that's, that's on the fence is Barry Manilow because I know a lot of his stuff's repetitive and he has the same kind of Yes. Um, style of every song but um my guiltiest pleasure music um i really love that song um straight up by paul abdul that was that's that's one of my i just think it's just a well-written pop song yeah see i always joked around that that there are certain pop songs out there that that whoever put them together was a genius whether the singer was very good or not, whoever came up with the hooks, the beats and all mm -hmm. that stuff, you're like, you can't not catch that. And it's like, it's stuck. Like, uh, I, I, my, like my guilty pleasure a few years ago was Kesha. I, that, oh, okay. that music would hook and it would just, you'd be like, okay. And then it didn't help <laughs> I, where I, where I worked, you would hear it like you're five like, that's times. That's stuck in my head. Okay. Yep. <laughs> yeah. So. All right, um, guilty pleasure movies, genres, you know. See, I'm, I'm telling you, in the same way, I will love something and I will be unapologetic. You know, I will say that Medea is some funny shit. And I don't care if someone, whatever, anyone thinks of that. Um, my guiltiest pleasure, though, I would have to say it would be um, like erotic thriller type movies like uh lifetime original movies hand the rocks the cradle poison ivy that kind of stuff i love those movies and they're so smutty i call them smutty movies oh, yeah. and sometimes i'm just in the mood for a smutty movie and i love those movies well the other day at my shop i got uh poison ivy one two and three on vhs in a box of stuff and i was like yeah those are going over here and we'll keep these <laughs> oh yeah i've seen them all yeah um, and it's, my, my wife's is uh i'm with you there yeah the, there, there there's my wife's big uh guilty pleasure is she watches the uh, uh um like the christian movies with like the left behind and stuff like that and oh, i just okay. look at her and i'm like she's like she's a pagan and <laughs> she loves watching them because they're just so bad i can't help it <laughs> Goes, I don't make she goes I don't make fun of the dumb shit you watch I'm like yes you do <laughs> <laughs> but I'm the first person that anytime they come through the shop or whatever I gather them all up on dvd or blu-ray and I bring them home so she can watch them 
So. (laughs) (laughs) That's funny. Um, But, you know, if you, okay, I I asked this one. You can hire any person to be in a movie, no budget, just no, no, you know, money's not a problem. Who are you hiring? And it could be anybody. It could be actor, musician. You could director, writer, whatever. You know, I I would have known this um, answer to this question. John Hurt is my absolute favorite actor of all time. I, I every time I see him in a performance, I feel moved. I just think he's so wonderful. And and it would have been him, um, but unfortunately, he's passed away. Um, but I, yeah. I feel like he's definitely someone I would always have wanted to work with. So John Hurt's legitimately in like three of my favorite movies. So I got to agree. I mean, you know, I love him in Alien, uh, mm-hmm. Brazil, uh, not Brazil. Um, um, he was also Space in Balls. Spaceballs. He was in Doctor Who. He was in, you know, I'm like, God dang. He, yeah, I, I gotta agree. He, he's a great actor, and I, I phenomenal. Don't blame me on that one at all. Um, all right, genre of movie that you have not worked in yet that you would love to work in. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> Maybe fantasy unless you can't monos returns <laughs> i mean already, it's fantastic you already did that and it's a and it is a, it is a fantasy um oh you know what no i will answer it. except for i i did audio for a movie called bug wars but let's say science fiction i've never really been able to sink my teeth into something that's pure science fiction would you like to direct it act in it or you know write it hmm i would say any any of it most may probably act in big opera big epic space opera or uh or just yeah yeah that'd be cool (laughs) what's your favorite project you've worked on so far do you have a favorite monos returns monos okay yeah it's not it's not just that it's monos but um all the people involved were so wonderful. I mean, we all got along really well and a lot of us became really good friends and we're still close. Um, And, you know, people who didn't, I didn't become friends with, I still, you know, have some sort of connection with, um, whether it be like on Facebook or just say hello every now and then, or, um, you know, I feel a kinship with everyone who worked on it. it was a wonderful experience being with everybody. There was a, just a lot of love going on, um, a lot of connections, a lot of family. Like I was saying how there was a lot of kismet going on on the production. I mean, we had somebody, so, okay, just for example, so Christopher who played Jay, mm-hmm. he had met Jackie years ago in El Paso and he got cast because he met Rachel and it, because he was interested in puppets and Rachel has a puppet company. Um, so he became friends with Rachel and then Rachel asked him to film our Kickstarter video because he had offered that at one point. He said, I, you know, if you ever need a camera guy. And so he filmed our Kickstarter video. And from there we talked to him and he was like, Hey, if you, you know, I'd like to audition and this and that. And so we're like, okay. And then he ended up auditioning. And he ended up getting the part and he ended up, you know, working with Jackie and becoming friends with Jackie, whom he met years ago, which was so strange, like in a whole other way. And didn't come to the project through her, came to the project through Rachel and I. Um, So there was that connection. There was, you know, I can't remember who it was, but another one of our actors ended up knowing the person through a family connection that at the Airbnb that he stayed in in the small town where we were filming but from a totally different place in the world you know so that kind of stuff kept happening and there were all these connections all these personal connections and people just 
were loving being there. We all got along. We all clicked when we had our first read through. Everyone just clicked together. Um, it wasn't awkward. It wasn't weird. It felt comfortable. It felt like we were doing what we were supposed to do. Um, people fell into their roles. I mean, it was just in that way, it was one of the easiest productions I've ever been on because we all were just on the same page or something. We were all connected and, and, and like I said, people were falling into their roles. People were doing such a great job. People were trusting each other. And it was a really wonderful experience in that way. Now, this, this is, I, I gotta ask you, you're, you're a director and an actress and stuff like this. When you act in a movie that you don't direct, do you ever look, you know, be like, hey, you know, try to get tips or do you ever feel like, you know, oh, I would do it this way or you just look at the, the, the vision and go, nope, that's how it goes. Um, yeah. If I'm acting, I'm the actor, they're mm -hmm. the director, and I'm following their directions. Um, I would only ever give tips if somebody was open to it or asked for it. Um, I mean, with Joe Sherlock, no. He knows what he's doing, and he knows what he wants. And I'm just there, to, you know, he tells me what to do, and I do it, basically. Um, but, you know, if I'm working with someone who's less experienced, I might say, hey, um, I have a tip if you want me to give you a tip or, you know, or I can just be quiet and, and do what you tell me to, <laughs> because I, that's how I feel. It's like when, when someone's a director, you got to respect their vision and you got to respect what, where they're going, because it's hard to see that from the other side of the camera. Um, but I just trust it and I just let them do what they need to do. Do you ever find it hard to both direct and be and act in your movies? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it helps um, when I'm working with Joe Sherlock, it helps speak as a DP, you know, if he's a mm -hmm. DP, yeah, it helps because he has a director's eye and we work together with him directing me. Um, so that so that's relatively easy. Right. Um, when I work with him, it's not, you know, I can just say, hey, does do I need to move this way? Or does this need to be like that? And he can just tell me. Um, you know, I guess it really just depends on the crew and how big it is. Am I also doing any of the camera if it's like really small production? Um, it is definitely easier, though, to focus on um, one thing rather than the other. But sometimes it, it, if I write the story, sometimes I have something specific in mind mm -hmm. and I will want to, to do a role. Um, but, I, you know, like I said, the last, over the last two years, I've been primarily acting. I've been doing a lot of acting for both Joe Sherlock and for Joseph Bogley. Um, he did Specimen 6, and he just um, also directed me in another movie that's not out yet. It's an anthology by John Ward. Uh, so I've been doing a lot of that, and I've been really liking that. Like I said, I want to get into doing my own stuff soon, but I've really been enjoying just letting go and just being the actor. So, okay, I, I see this one here. Um, porn star, the Jenna Jones story from 2013. <laughs> the animated mockumentary about the life and times of world famous porn star, Jenna Jones, five minutes. Now is that traditional animation or is that stop motion or? or did... That's stop motion, it's, it's Barbie stop motion. Oh, that's so it's with Barbies. Yeah. It's um, my friend Jim Smith, um, who he he write he's a writer. He writes short stories, and also we used to be in a band together. Um, he wrote music um, back then, and um, he it was a short film that he made for. He submitted it to the Hump Festival in Seattle, which is like um, basically an amateur short porn. <laughs> film festival and it and it was huge for a while um i think it was started by the stranger magazine which um is up here and anyway i i don't know what ended up happening with that short but i saw it it's really funny it's a comedy yeah um but yeah i just did vo a voice for it 
yeah and i i was just seeing that and i was like i had to i had to bring that one up so you, but you actually get to play lucifer in specimen six too how was it to play the devil yeah yeah specimen six was one of my funnest acting experiences it was one of my most challenging um there was a lot of dialogue and that I had to memorize and understand. And it wasn't simple dialogue either. Um, and then I had to be a character that I is, you know, not me. <laughs> Very different from myself. And um, I got to be in, in makeup, like full face makeup with some, you know, prosthetic work, a little bit of prosthetic work, and then um, a little bit of body makeup and stuff. So that was really fun. That was really cool. Um, and yeah i just enjoyed the challenge of that role yeah the like i said i'm i'm, I'm going through your 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 list here and the fact that you were in uh things five and six 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 but you're two different characters because it's probably two vastly different movies <laughs> if it's a things movie yes i'm actually i'm in i'm in the upcoming there's another things coming out soon <laughs> And um, I'm in three of the Thing sequels, but I'm not the same character. It because you've seen the some of the things filmed are all anthologies. Yeah. And um, so each short is different, and it doesn't have a through story that goes through the um, series either. So every film is different. Every short is new. So yeah, I just play different characters in the different ones and uh you were talking about your bands and stuff um what genre of music do you play in your bands or do your bands always... um it's mostly like i mean i don't know i'm saying like alternative rock kind of stuff um i had one band huh -uh, we were um sort of like electro dance electronic dance three keyboard players and drums and a and a bass and um so yeah i do a lot of dancey a lot of um rock kind of stuff now i had to i have to ask everybody this because uh with the with everything that happened over the last year with the pandemic and stuff like that did anything you working on just kind of get scrapped and thrown aside or were you able to actually get to everything or at least no i i was in the middle of a couple projects that are sadly on hold and have been you know, we were, I actually had a schedule for April um, to film and we had lockdown. And so that was the first lockdown. So this was almost two years ago now. And we had to cancel everything. I'm like half done with that project. And I, you know, I have to get back into it at some later date. Um, I'm, it's going to be weird to do it, but we already have it half filmed so i'm committed um so yeah i mean that that was really a bummer i'm i'm kind of i'm like over those feelings though now because it's been so long that i'm kind of in in the, like okay when we do come back what do i need to do um so nothing was so yeah. scrapped you're just you're just pause I, and we're going back to pause. it put a pin in it we're sorry back my cat's it. running up back and forth on my lap um <laughs> yeah might, might have been running around pops. behind me all day <laughs> which cat name his name is max max oh wow. mine are lucy <laughs> and matt and Maze, and they were right behind me now they're gone so i i saw yeah yeah they, they <laughs> i did an interview with uh somebody and they're just stopping to go do you have cats and i went yeah and they're like really? <laughs> i want to make sure your toys weren't moving on the shelves because that would have just been weird i was like <laughs> oh i don't have any cats <laughs> <laughs> and uh my cats uh wife's cat's name's lucy because we were watching lucifer so it's lucifer and Mas Oh, okay yeah so we're we're, we're, uh, <laughs> we're we're real original on our cats names so <laughs> 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 all right um you you with all the movies you're out um where can you get your movies i know uh manos is on prime right now not prime but uh it's on amazon prime for uh purchase or rental i believe 
Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, it's on a, some other streaming sites, but I don't know them all because we mm-hmm. went through a, a distributor or whatever. Um, so you can also buy Monos Returns on DVD um, off of our website, monosreturns.com. So that's an easy way to pick it up. Um, there are some of my other films are online streaming you just have to look them up um some of my you know my short films are on my youtube channel and it's just tanya atomic t-o-n-j-i-a um atomic and a lot of my shorts are available there or at my vimeo so i have some shorts on both okay um hobo with the trash can i'm not sure where it's available now but um it was online streaming. I don't know if it's still online streaming, but I know that we, we should be having a DVD soon, available soon. Um, and then, let's see. Things, um, the Things series, that's available through David Sterling. Specimen 6 was available through SOV video, um, SOV Horror, but now if i think it's online i think you can rent it online um i would say everything's look upable if you can't find my films online um i don't know send me a message or something <laughs> send me an email <laughs> I don't know. Um, but you should be able to look it up and and find most of my stuff streaming somewhere now that's cool um do you, are you are you planning on doing any cons when everything gets better or are you just going to go right back into movies and and get that done first or I don't know. I mean, I feel like I feel like there's so much that I don't know what's going to happen or you know, it'll just be like a starting fresh kind of. Mhm. Uh, so I don't really know what's going on i know i want to jump back into some of the projects that um i've had to pause on so that'll probably be my first priority i i completely understand that um i i'm i paused a project i was working on going into pandemic then during pandemic i had to completely redo it uh, I probably, I've told this story a thousand times. I wrote a movie, was planning on shooting 2020, everything hit. Um, what was sitting there watching Amazon one night, found a movie that was really close to the movie that I was writing. Wow. So I had to just can everything when I everything, but about 70% of it had to get tossed. Um, but then people who've read the script for the new one like the ending a lot better. So I'm like, oh, okay. So now yeah. I just gotta have the time and the effort and uh to to put into that. Um, but it will it, my luck, it'll just go with all the other scripts I've written and I'm just set in a notebook somewhere for a decade before I actually go, hey, I wrote something. Uh, <laughs> um, because I got back into doing no, this. I, I, I encourage you to go forward. I encourage you to go forward with with those. Thank you. Um, it, it's it's one of the ones where where it comes down to time management. I mean, I I, I own a comic book store, and uh, I have a son with autism and a wife, and and it gets really busy in in my life. So shooting, I would have right. like one day a week where I'd be able to shoot, and then next the following Sunday or Thursday, you know, two days a week, I might be able to shoot. But I just thought about. I have an anthology I'd worked on before that, which I thought about just going to that because that would be easier to be able to knock out something in two days and go back to it later. But I do this instead. <laughs> yeah, hit- well, you know, if you you can always start small, you know, the five minute thing, or there's also those like, what is it? The, there's like the 15 second horror Oh, festival yeah. or something like that i mean yeah i mean if you if you don't have time you can always do something like that or so I, and trust me i know people that make movies that it takes them a year to do and they're doing like one weekend every now and again <laughs> i mean that happens too yeah 
See, I thought about since I got this the YouTube page up, I'm doing this. I do my Saturday morning cartoon show. I thought, man, I, maybe I should just go ahead and do little shorts and then put them on there and just, you know, have fun with it. So I, don't, I don't take it seriously anymore, but <laughs> um, we're getting close to the hour here. I don't want to get too much further. I'm, I keep watching. Um, like I said, you are, you're amazing. I mean, you're, like I said, you are writing, you're directing, you're doing music, uh, you're producing, um, you know, you just said that you, you even did, uh, you were even prosthetics as, as Lucifer in the devil. That, that's cool that you're able to, you know, just do that much. That's amazing. I mean, you know, cause I, I don't know how some of you guys like Henrik, that kid is pounding out movies constantly and constantly working and stuff like that but i'm like i'm like i don't know how he does it i mean I, <laughs> actually i kind of know how he does it because i think he just turned 30 so i'm almost 50 and i'm getting slow and old. <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah well, I, you know I, there i mean it sorry <laughs> no go ahead go ahead sorry it the filmmaking i mean i say music is my first love and it is but the, but filmmaking is like I don't know I want to say it's like a disease it's like I got bit by this filmmaking bug and I don't know what to do to get rid of it <laughs> it's really like constant in my mind constant in my life and it's the kind of thing that like eats away at me until I'm making the thing and you'll I mean I find a lot of other indie directors feeling the same way in the same boat um it's like an obsession i mean it really is an obsession and it's i mean the only way that some of this stuff gets done because it does take a lot of work and it does take a lot of time and it's something that sometimes you lose sleep over or you're or i mean i don't know it's a certain kind of person and it's a kind of like craze i don't know <laughs> it's an obsession and you know like i said some i some of these people that i know are making these movies like one day a month but they have but they got to be doing it you know and that's the whole thing it's like that's why we keep doing it because like we have to oh yeah it, it's I, I i've said this before and it's when you get creative people with your mind that doesn't shut down you've constantly got to be doing something and making something and you know, working on something, and and I think that's you know I I don't compare myself to to people because I you know, but that's what I got to do. I got to keep my brain. My brain's always going a thousand miles an hour, and so I'm always working on something. Whether it's this show, whether it's my store, whether it's my kids, whether it's writing, um, it, it's I've always got to be working on something, and it I think it helps that I am I got a little bit of manic, but. <laughs> It's, it, it, I think it is when you get, when you get like uber creative people that, you know, it's, it's no longer just a job. It's not this, it's not this, it's, it's just a passion that, that they got to get out, I guess, as I'm stumbling over my own words, I'm trying to figure out how to say this, but I mean, you know, it, it's got to be there somewhere with just being able to some of the stuff people are able to put out in the amount of time they're about able to put it out isn't insane to me. So, <laughs> um, you know, but it, it is what it is, I guess. I, I'm rambling in, I'm sorry. Um, do you got anything that you're working on currently before, before we go that you're, you're working on right now? Um, I do, I'm working on, a, I'm working on an anthology. I don't, I don't know what to say. I don't want to say too much because it's like coming together right now. And so I don't want to like give the wrong information or, you know, it's, but I'm working on an anthology I'm really excited about. It's, um, you know, there's a bunch of other directors, all people that I admire a lot. And um, yeah, we're getting this anthology together and I'm hoping early next year I'll have more to say about it. Okay. Um, <laughs> but it, it has to do with the theme of like kind of like love and then monsters and 
like horror and love. That's cool. That's cool. Oh, well, it's been, I'm closing in. I want to hurry up and get this. Um, I got to say, I appreciate you coming on. Uh, I am glad you put out Manos Returns. Um, and it, it's been fun talking to you. Um, you know, I hope to maybe talk down the road again when you've got more stuff coming up or, you know, you want to talk about something that, you know, in the past or whatever, you let me know. I can get you on the show anytime. It's my show. I can do what I want. Uh, so I, I do appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you very much. Oh, there's one thing I, I want to mention real sure. quick that I hadn't got to mention is I do work a lot with Michelle Nesk, who also um, lives in the area. And we have a couple shorts on my YouTube page. Um, so that's Tony Atomic on my YouTube page, Just a Prick and 333 Illuminati, which we're working on a, a feature version of. Okay. Um, I'll tack at it at the end. I'll put, uh, I put all the information, you know, um, you know, your YouTube page and all that stuff. Um, I, I do all that. So, um, like I said, I do appreciate all the work that you're doing. Um, it's good seeing independent filmmakers out there putting, you know, love and passion into movies, even if they don't have the money, even if there's no money involved, they're still out there busting their ass. And I'm glad you're one of them. Um, not that there's no money involved. I wish there was more money involved. Um, but it, it is, it is good seeing, you know, just people out there doing it for the passion, I guess, you know, and I think it's fun and it's just, I, I guess, endearing. I mean, I, I love that stuff. I mean, I've been watching <laughs> independent films for as long as, uh, I don't know if you remember this. Um, I don't, I have no idea how old you are. I don't want to, I'm not going to ask you, don't ask them how old they are. Um, when you could order movies out of the back of Fangoria, because these people would sell their little movies that they put together. I don't know if you remember that. There's like horror movie magazines where you could Aww. find, you would, um, you know, people would be listening. They're like, hey, do you want to see bloody horror movie, blah, blah, blah. And you send us 20 bucks and you'd get a videotape of these guys' movies that they made in their backyard. And uh, I I wish I still had some of them. I mean, they're, they're long since gone. I got that probably in high school, junior high. Um, and I've said before, I'm 47. So that was 35 years ago. So VHS tapes do not last forever. Yeah. Um, but I've, I've been a fan of that stuff for, since I was a kid and just watching what people can do with no budget and just passion and, and friends and fun is, is great. So, like I said, I appreciate what you're doing. I do. So, you know. and thank you. You're welcome. I appreciate that. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, all right. Well, I'm going to let you go. Um, is there anything else you want to add? Any, uh, you know, want to, you know, tell us where, I mean, you already told us where you got your movies, but just if there's anything else you want to add at the end of here. Just, you know, if if you are a fan of Manos the Hands of Fate, I would say please try to check out our movie. Um, we we nod both to the original and to like the Mystery Science Theater crowd too. So just be aware of that. Um, but yeah, I, I think that, you know, we try to encompass a large fan base and I know some people um, were really pleased with what we've done. So I, I'm pretty proud of it. Um, I'm probably going to, hopefully this weekend, I'll order the Manos DVD because I'll put it up there with my other Manos because I actually have Manos on DVD, not the Mystery Science Theater 3000 version. I have the reg regular version. I bought it at the dollar store for a dollar, but I do have a DVD of Manos. <laughs> um, what was I going to say? Oh, you, what you should do is if you ever get a chance to redo your DVD, you should do your own mystery science theater version as a special feature on the dvd <laughs> <laughs> all right well that's a I, good idea yeah <laughs> i funny. think it'd be hilarious just, just you know because then it would be a throwback to the movie <laughs> and to the mystery science theater version of it too but do it yourself then you can make fun yeah. of your own movie so <laughs> but um all right thank you very much i do appreciate it um 
like I said, I will put everything here at the end. Uh, your links to your to your. Do you mind if I put a link to your Facebook page and stuff? Or, yay nay. Um. Or do yeah. You link to the official. The I'll send you a link to that. Yeah, I have an official fan site. Okay. Okay. Cool. 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 Um. I'll probably put this together. Um. It'll it'll drop next Monday. So I'll work on it probably Sunday afternoon, maybe, and edit it all together and pick out any slow moments that I think I'm a little bit boring or whatever. Um, so you got you have a good night and uh, thank you for being on the show again. I do appreciate it. Um, anytime my a guest appears on my little show, I appreciate it. It means the world to me um, and I appreciate what you're doing. So um, have a good night and have a pleasant tomorrow yeah thank you so much you're welcome and uh take care and <laughs> yeah, have uh, a good night thanks you too good night i would like to thank tanya atomic again for appearing on the show tonight um as always the group therapy tv is brought to you by are you game the best combo collectible store uh all around Geek Shop in Pickle, Ohio, located at 124 North Sunset Drive, Pickle, Ohio, 45356. You can watch the Group Therapy TV podcast on YouTube or listen to it wherever you listen to your podcast, uh, if you want to hear the audio version. Uh, and you can watch me every Saturday at 8 a.m. on Saturday Morning Serials, and I bring you the best of 80s cartoons and frivolity. And yet again, thank you guys for watching, and I will see you next time for more Group Therapy TV podcast. Later.